Hi everyone, Bear from Bear Reads Books. I'm here with another Big Bears book haul. Now the last one was my birthday book haul in, at the beginning of September. We're now at the beginning of October and all of my October readathons are well underway but I have a stack of books, excuse me, a stack of books that has arrived since the last time we spoke. Now, obviously I mentioned this last time, but it wasn't actually in my possession last time. We have Duck's Newbury Port by Lucy Ellman. That is a lump of a book. Uh, I'm not going to get to this right away, but now it is mine. I don't have to grab it from the, from the library. I can, I can just sit on it or use it as a paperweight until I'm, I feel the desire to uh, spend a lot of time reading this book. Let's go through this pile of books. Now this it wasn't all this wasn't all bought in the same place or the same sitting. This is books bought since my last book haul video. So in the last month or so, there's probably two purchases here, I think. Uh, one new book purchase and one used book purchase. So maybe three purchases if you include a couple of Kindle purchases or ebook purchases as well. Let's look at secondhand books first. So I, I, this month, is it just these? Yeah, so in the month of September, early October, I did find a secondhand bookstore in my town. I didn't even know it existed. Uh, there is another booktuber out there doing wonderful things in my town. I didn't even know. And she's doing great videos. And I saw her shopping in this shop secondhand bookshop and I went to it and it had some wonderful things only three the first the Ballad of the Sad Cafe by Carson McCullers now there has been booktubers that I follow mentioning this book for so long and I had seen that I could read it online and I hate reading things online like a PDF or something and it probably was illegal so I didn't really want it but this just magically appeared at this secondhand bookstore not only has it been, not only have I heard it, heard some of my favourite booktubers talking about it, but I've also heard my favourite book podcaster talking about this one, and that's the podcast called Book Fight. If you if you're a fan of podcasts and you never heard of Book Fight, and you're also a fan of books, check it out. Two dudes that teach creative writing, uh, that also love reading books, and they read all sorts of weird and wonderful things that. Being in Australia, I have never heard of before. They read essays, non-fiction, fiction, short stories, all sorts of crazy stuff. And this is one of the things that they said was amazing reading. And they read it together and then they comment on it and they also look at the reviews on Goodreads. So if you're into that sort of stuff, podcasts about books, check it out, Book Fight. They talk about this book. Can't wait. The other one was Ina Morata by Joseph Gangemi. Um, I was almost certain that another booktuber had mentioned this, hence why I picked it up and purchased it. And then I can't find out who actually mentioned it. Was it one of my booktuber friends or is it just something, I don't know, the vibe? I have no idea. Ina Morata by Joseph Gangemi. It sounds very interesting. Uh, it's all about spiritualism in the 1920s um, and it was a book that Brad Pitt Brad Pitt bought the rights, the screenplay rights to this book uh, and then tried to make a movie out of it and couldn't or if he did it's crap, I don't know. So maybe it's good, I have no idea. So my third, and I've tried reading this before and failed dismally when I got it from the library but it is just too big. To read from the library. It is Don DeLillo's Underworld and when I read interviews with authors they constantly talk about this book being something that they carry around with them and read constantly and reread constantly. And the first time I tried to read it was from the library I felt rushed and I didn't like it and I got maybe a fifth of the way through it. So I'm going to try again. Now with my own copy I can take my time. Imagine reading Duck's Newburyport and Don DeLillo's Underworld at the same time. That is insane. So no, that won't be happening at the same time, but I am excited to read uh, Don, DeLillo, Don DeLillo's Underworld. Uh, so that's my 
that's my so that's my secondhand book purchases. I also had quite a few uh, new book purchases. Now let me start with this one. I bought Marcel Proust's In Search of Lost Time, Volume Two. I have read Volume One. <laughs> I haven't read anything beyond Volume One. I read it maybe 18 months ago. It was difficult, but I felt rewarded when I finished. So I decided. So I decided to buy the second. Uh, it's full of very lengthy descriptions and sentences that go on for half a page and then continue on with another half a page in brackets, followed by a semicolon that then continues the thread of the same sentence. It's not quite as long without punctuation as something like James Joyce's Ulysses or Lucy Ellman's Duck's Newburyport, but in the same losing all my books ah. but in the same vein the descriptions are incredibly detailed and incredibly lengthy but I, I but unlike James Joyce's Ulysses when I finished this and I couldn't finish James Joyce's Ulysses when I finished this I felt like I had done something special and I remember it fondly as a as a good story as well so it's taken me a while but I'm going to read the second one and over time continue. There are six books in A Search for Lost Time. It's a very long, drawn out search for this lost time. I hope he finds it. I hope I find it. I dropped this one. Uh, I have also bought, let's stick with the old ones. I also bought James, ba James Baldwin, Go Tell. Let's try that again. I've also bought James Baldwin, Go Tell It on the Mountain. It's available everywhere in secondhand bookshops, but not usually available brand new, so I ordered it online, I think. Yes, I did order this one online, uh, and very keen to give it a go. I've never read any Baldwin. Uh, this is uh, semi-autobiographical, I do believe, and it tells the story of boyhood in 1930s Harlem, which is as James Baldwin grew up himself. So it should be an interesting read. Um, what else have I got? I have Amor Tao's Rules of Civility. Uh, some other booktubers have been talking about this, so I'm really keen to have a crack at it as well. Lots of people talking about this one. Something you may not have seen before, Murmur by Will Eaves. Um, don't know much about it. Bought it at the same time as Rules of Civility. Um, it was... Nah, it sounds very good. Taking its cue from the arrest and legally enforced chemical castration of the mathematician Alan Turing, Murmur is the account of a man who responds to intolerable physical and mental stress with love, honour and a rigorous unsentimental curiosity about the ways in which we perceive ourselves and the world. Sounds great. I also bought The Long Take by Robin Robertson, who was shortlisted shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize last year, 2018, and it's a not a standard novel, and it is, it, there, are, there is prose and poetry uh, and photographs and all sorts of different things, so it's a very different take on the novel, and, and that, that is what punctuated last year's Man Booker. It was punctuated by, so last year's Man Booker we had Nick Drasno's Sabrina, the graphic novel, the first ever graphic novel, Robin Robertson's The Long Take, which includes multi-written media, so prose, poetry, photography, lots and lots of different stuff going on there. Uh, so an interesting thing, I did read Nick Drasno's um, uh, Sabrina and found it very, very good. Uh, and lastly, I have Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin, possibly the best title for a book ever. Three words, mouthful of birds. Uh, I don't know what to make of it. It is stories, and if you've read any other of Samantha, if you've read any of Samantha, this is really hard to say. If you've read any of Samantha Schweblin's other work, uh, in particular Fever Dream, you'll find that it is strange and confronting. Uh, fever dream was like exactly that. Now I've never actually had a real fever uh, where I've been laid up for days and all and just 
never, never happened to me. But uh, it's what I imagine a fever dream to be, like just complete, completely off my face and hallucinating and seeing things and talking to myself and talking to people that aren't there. And her book, The Fever Dream, was just like that. Really hard to make any sense of whatsoever, but completely and utterly captivating. Uh, and Mouthful of Birds, I came across a mention of this book in an interview with Tommy Orange, not me interviewing Tommy Orange, but I read an interview with Tommy Orange where he was asked what recent book had really moved him. And this, Mouthful of Birds, was his answer. And I instantly needed to have it because I really love Tommy Orange's There There. And for him to say that this was particularly moving to him, I thought I must read it. Couldn't find it anywhere, ended up buying it online, and uh, can't wait to read it. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten more books uh, added to my added to my pile. Uh, some of them I will get to very soon, others I will not. On top of that, I did make a few ebook purchases this month. Uh, let me see if I can find some. One is the, an Australian one, an Australian dystopian novel written by a 65 plus woman. Nothing against 65 year, year old plus women, but it just seems like an interesting genre for uh, an ex-teacher uh, who is now retired writing a book about dystopian futures. So interesting. Um, it's called The Second Cure by a woman called Margaret Morgan. Very, very interesting. Again, how I usually find my books. I heard a podcast interview with her sounded fascinating, she sounded like a lovely lady, so I bought them. I bought a couple of other things off the Man Booker list, uh, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo uh, on uh, ebook, and I bought uh, You Have Arrived, no, You Have Arrived at Your Destination by Amor Towles, uh, 10 Minutes 38 Seconds by Elif Shafak, and American Spy by Lauren Wilkinson. As I've rattled off a lot of books there, I'll put them down in the notes, but there's a lot of purchases this month. Um, I hope it, I hope I get to them soon. I feel like I'm rushing. There is a storm coming, uh, and I, when I listen to this, I may need to re-record. It's getting windier and windier, and darker and darker. Hopefully, we get some rain. If you can see the grass and the trees behind me, it looks really burnt and grey and awful. We really do need some rain. I hope I get it, but it may have ruined <laughs> this particular video, which means I'll be back tomorrow to record it again. So here is 10 books purchased and another three or four ebooks purchased in the past month. Another huge book, book haul and I don't know how I'm ever going to get to them. I have 10 books on my TBR for October, which if you have looked at my previous video, uh, is across three readathons, and that's a big enough ask. And here I have just bought another 10 to replace the 10 I'm currently reading. There's a problem here. If anyone can identify this particular problem, a compulsion even, you can tell me, we can have a discussion in the comments below. Time to go, time to keep reading, have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your October and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.